Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna
Hare Krishna, everyone. Thank you for joining Shri Bhagavatam Sangha and Attentive Japa. And we'll make a start. We're talking about Dhru Maharaj still. And Dhru Maharaj is uh, now met with the Lord Narayan. Last time uh, Dhru Maharaj was speaking to Lord Narayan, is um, glorifying him. And now it's Lord Narayan's turn to say some words to Dhru Maharaj. How, how amazing is that? You know, you won't get that in this yuga, uh, you know, this direct conversation. So let's see what, uh, what happens. So the great sage Maitreya continued. So Maitreya is telling, we do, there's so many conversations within conversations. The great sage Maitreya continued, my dear Vidur, when Dhru Maharaj, who had good intentions in his heart, finished his prayer to Lord Narayan, the Supreme Lord, the person of the Godhead, who's very kind to his devotees and servants, congratulated him and spoke as follows. So let's do a quick prayer, then we'll say, we'll see what uh, Lord Ryan said. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Mukham Kroti Vachanam Pangum Langyate Garim Yadkirpa Tamahamande Shri Guru Deen Taranam. Paramnanda Madhavam Shri Chaitanya Ishwaram Hari Yom Tassat Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Cheva Narotamam Devim Sarsvit Vyasam Tartojiyam Udiriyat Nasna Presha Vadreshu Nittam Bhagavat Sevya Bhagavati Uttam Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Nestiki. <coughs> now what did uh, Lord Narayan say? The personality of God had said, My dear Dhru, how amazing, you know, God says, My dear Narayan Kesha, oh, my dear Sarveshri Mataji, <laughs> that be, you know, this is like dream come true, right? My dear Dhru, son of the king, you have executed pious vows, and I also know the desire within your heart. Although your desire is very ambitious and very difficult to fulfill, I shall favor you with its fulfillment. All good fortune unto you. So in the Bhagavad Gita 2.44, it is said, Bhogeshwarya Prasaktanam, those who are addicted to material pleasure cannot be attracted to devotion service. It was true that at heart, Dhruv Maharaj wanted a kingdom that would be far better than Brahmalok. Because he wanted a kingdom better than his grandfather, right? This was a natural desire for a Kshatriya. He was also only five years old. And in his childish way, he desired to have a kingdom far greater than his father's, grandfather's, or great-grandfather's. I think uh, Brahma must be his great-grandfather. So his, <clears throat> his father, Uttampath, yeah, so Manu is his grandfather, 
His father Uttarpath was a son of Manu, and Manu was a son of Lord Brahma. Dhruv wanted to excel all these great family members. The Lord knew Dhruv Maharaj's childish ambition. But how was it possible to offer Dhruv a position more exalted than Lord Brahma's? You know, Brahma is the controller of the universe. How can it be that somebody who, who controls the whole universe, somebody has, is more exalted than him? It's hard to imagine. The Lord assured Dhruv Maharaj that Dhruv would not be bereft of the Lord's love. He encouraged Dhruv not to be worried that he childishly had material desires and at the same time had the pure aspiration to be a great devotee. Generally, the Lord does not award a pure devotee material opulence because it will go to his head, right? If you got too much opulence, you will not apply for bhakti, even though he may desire it. But Dhruva Maharaj's case was different. The Lord knew that he was such a great devotee that in spite of having material opulence, he would never be deviated from love of God. This example illustrates that a highly qualified devotee can never have the facility of material enjoyment and at the same time execute love of God. This, however, was a special case for Dhrumara. This is why we're reading about Dhrumara, because they are special cases. Uh, you, you won't get anybody else uh, you know, like that. The Supreme Person of Godhead continued, My dear Dhruv, I shall award you the glowing planet known as Pole Star, which will continue to exist even after the dissolution at the end of millennium. No one has ever ruled this planet, which is surrounded by all the solar systems, planets and stars. All the luminaries in the sky circum circumambulate this planet just as bulls tread around a central pole for the purpose of crushing grains, keeping the pole star to their right. Uh, all the stars inhabited by the great sages like Dharma, Agni, Kashyap, and Shukr circumambulate this planet, which continues to exist even after the dissolution of all others. So if the, if the pole star is, is to your right, that means you're going clockwise, right? That is the usual way. You, the planets and everything is turning clockwise. And also, um, it can also mean that the pole star is the center of the universe because everything is circumlating. So it must be in the center. Now, there are two kinds of disillusions. One during the night of Lord Brahma and one at the end of Lord Brahma's life. At the end of Brahma's life, selected personalities go back home. So this is very interesting. Selected personalities go back home. Uh, I think we've read this before, that uh, exalted devotees will go back with him, back to Godhead. Dhruva Maharaj is one of them. The Lord assured Dhruva that he would exist beyond the partial dis dissolution of, his, of this universe. Thus, at the end of the complete dissolution, Dhruva Maharaj would go directly to Vaikuntha Lok, to a spiritual planet in the spiritual sky. So when Brahma dies and there's complete dissolution, then everybody has to go back. Everything is just finished. After your father goes to the forest and awards you the rule of his kingdom, you will rule continuously the entire world for 36,000 years. And all your senses will continue to be as strong as they are now. You will never become old. How amazing is that? In the Satya Yuga, people generally for 100,000 years. Dhruva Maharaj's ruling the world for 36,000 years was quite possible in those days. The Lord continued, Sometimes in the future, your brother Uttam will go hunting in the forest and while absorbed in hunting, he will be killed. Your stepmother, Suruchi, being maddened upon the death of her son, will go to search him out in the forest, but she will be devoured by a forest fire. So the Lord is telling the future to Dhru Maharaj that uh, those people who wish you ill will, they, they will be terminated. Say. Dhru Maharaj came to the forest to search out the Supreme Personality Godhead with a revenging spirit against his stepmother. His stepmother had insulted Dhruv 
who was not an ordinary person, but a great Vaishnav, an offense at the lotus feet of a Vaishnav is the greatest offense in this world. And I guess that's why they, they will lose their life. Because of having insulted Dhruva Maharaj, Shruti would become mad upon the death of her son and would enter a forest fire. And thus her life would be ended. This was specifically mentioned by Lord Dhruva because he was determined for revenge against her. Just like the Kauravs, uh, Krishna, he couldn't, and couldn't stand all the insults that the Pandavas had to bear and he completely annihilated them as well. From this, we should we should take a lesson that we should never try to insult a Vaishnav. Not only should we not insult a Vaishnav, but we should not insult anyone unnecessarily. When Suruchi insulted Dhruva Maharaj, <coughs> he was just a child. She, of course, did not know that Dhruva was a great recognized Vaishnav. And so her offense was committed unknowingly. When one serves a Vaishnav unknowingly, one still gets a good result. And if one unknowingly insults a Vaishnav, one suffers the bad result as well. So, yeah, we have to be very careful. At least we should know what, you know, what we should have the intelligence to know when we are insulting, what is insulting and what is not insulting. Because sometimes we might not even know that we are insulting someone and we do it unknowingly. Pleasing him or displeasing him directly affects the pleasure and displeasure of the Supreme Lord. So when the Vaishnava is pleased, the Lord is pleased and vice versa. The Lord continued, I'm the heart of all sacrifices. You will be able to perform many great sacrifices and also give great charities. So the Lord already knows what Lord is going to achieve, what he's going to do. In this way, you will be able to enjoy the blessings of material happiness in this life. And at the time of your death, you will be able to remember me. So if you're giving great charity and doing great sacrifices, just show that you are not attached to your dhan, your money. You're not attached to it if you are able to give great charities. So Krishna gave you and you are able to give it away without any problem. That means it's there for your use and you're putting in right use, you're not attached to the money. You want to hold on to it. The most important factor in this verse is that the Lord's instructions regarding <clears throat> how to remember the Supreme Person God at, at the end of life. Ante Narayan Smriti. And the result of whatever we do in executing, executing spiritual activities is successful if we can remember Narayan. The Supreme Person God. This program of constant remembrance can be distributed by many things. But Dhruv Maharaj's life would be so pure as assured by the Lord himself that Dhruva would never forget him. Thus, at the time of his death, he would remember the Supreme Lord. And before his death, he would enjoy this material world. Not by sense gratification, but by performing great sacrifices. As stated in the Vedas, when one performs great sacrifices, he must give charity not only to Brahmins, but also to Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras. It is assured here that Dhru Maharaj would be able to perform such activities. So this is a lesson for us as well, that if God does give us money, we should share it, we should help people with it, not hold it. A Krishna conscious movement is, in this age of Kali, however, the great sacrifice is the performance of Sankirtan Yajna. Our Krishna conscious movement is designed to teach people and to learn ourselves the exact instruction of the person regarded. In this way, we shall continue to perform Sankirtan Yajna and continuously chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Then at the end of our lives, we shall certainly be able to remember Krishna and our program of life will be successful. Now, in this age, this distribution of prasad has replaced distribution of money. We don't have that much money, right? So, you know, you might say, well, I don't have that much money. How can I, you know, go around giving to Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Shudras, Vaishyas? How, how can I, I don't have that kind of finances, you know, especially right now with the econom economic uh, situation, people are just making ends meet. So, how can I help? So, it says here that in the Kalyuk, distribution of money has replaced Distribution of prasad. So at least you can offer prasad to people. 
you can uh, give money, some money to for Prashad as well. It doesn't have to be a great amount. Whatever you can afford, it can be for Prashad. That, that is our um, contribution in this Kalyug. No one has sufficient money to distribute. But if we distribute Krishna Prasad as far as possible, this is more valuable than the distribution of money. Because if you're distributing this money, the money could be misused. But if you're giving Prashad, then you know you're helping those people to purify. So this is a very good point. <clears throat> the person had a God had continued. My dear Dhru, after your material life in this body, you will go to my planet, which is always offered obeisances by the residents of all other planetary systems. It is situated above the planets of the seven rishis. So this planet is even higher than the planet of seven, Saptrishi. And having gone there, you will never have to come back again to this material world. So the Lord says, you will not come back to this material world. For you will reach Matsthanam, my abode. Therefore, Dhruv Lok or the pole star is the abode of Lord Vishnu within this material world. Upon it is there is an ocean of milk. And within the ocean, there is an island known as Shweta Deep. It is clearly indicated that this planet is situated above the seven planetary systems of Rishis. And because this planet is Vishnu Lok, it is worshipped by all other planetary systems. It may be question here, what will happen to the planet known as Dhruvlok at the time of dissolution of this universe? The answer is simple. Dhruvlok remains like other Vaikuntha Lokas beyond this universe. Shri Vishwanath Chak Chakurati Thakur has commented in this connection that the very word Navartate indicates that this planet is eternal. So although Dhruv Maharaj will go to Vaikuntha Lok with the Brahma when he is uh, finished his life here, the planet will still remain. The great sage Maitri said, after being worshipped and honoured by the boy, Dhruv Maharaj, after offering him his abode, so Dhruv Maharaj worshipped and honoured Narayan, and then Narayan offered him his abode. Lord Vishnu on the back of Garuda returned to his abode as Dhruv Maharaj looked on. <clears throat> so they both gave respect to each other, and then Narayan left. Lord Narayan went away on his Gurudha. Despite having achieved the desired result of his determination by worshipping the lotus feet of the Lord, Dhruv Maharaj was not very pleased. Thus he returned to his home. So he, he, he no longer wanted uh, this material opulence. Shri Vidur inquired, My dear Brahman, the abode of the Lord is very difficult to attain. It can be attained only by pure devotional service, <clears throat> which alone pleases the most affectionate, merciful Lord. Dhu Maharaj achieved this position even in one life. And he was very wise and conscious. 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 And why then was he not very pleased? So that's a good question. <clears throat> Maitre said, Dhu Maharaj's heart which was pierced by the arrows of the harsh words of his stepmother, was greatly aggrieved. And thus, when he fixed upon his goal of life, he did not forget her misbehavior. So, this is interesting because it shows that somebody's words are more sharper than an arrow, and than a physical arrow. The words, you know, the tongue, I think, is the biggest weapon. Okay? You can shoot someone, you can stab someone, whatever. But you might forgive them. But the tongue, once misused, is very difficult to forget what was said to you. It's very difficult. And it will keep you know, haunting you. It will keep coming back from time to time. It will haunt you. And uh, so... We have had this experience and we may have said something to other people uh, who feel the same. So this tongue is very dangerous. We have to learn to control the tongue, even for tasting foods and for speaking should be controlled. <clears throat> he did not demand actual liberation from this material world. 
but at the end of his devotion service, when the Supreme Person of God had appeared before him, he was simply ashamed of the material demands he had in his mind. Guru Maharaj thought to himself, to endeavor to be situated in the shade of the lotus feet of the Lord is not an ordinary task, because even the great brahmacharis headed by Sanandan, who practiced Ashtang Yoga in trance, attained the shelter of the Lord's lotus feet only after many, many births. Within six months, I achieved the same result. Yet due to my thinking differently from the Lord, I fell down from my positions. And let's just look at me. I am so unfortunate. I approached the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality Godhead, who can immediately cut the chain of the repetition of birth and death. But still, out of my foolishness, I prayed for things which are perishable. So he feels bad that uh, his uh, ultimate goal was actually um, a material opulence. Although the Lord even offered him a, a ticket back home to Vaikuntha eventually. And also a residence in, for many, many trillion years in the, in the, in the planet uh, Dhruv Lok. Um, he will, will have to remain until Brahma dies. So his great grandfather, when he passes away, they will, as souls, they will go back to Vaikuntha. So it's, it's going to be a long time yet. Since all the demigods who are situated in the higher, higher planet system will have to come down again, they are all an envious of my being elevated to Vaikuntha Lok by devotion service. These intolerant demigods have dissipated my intelligence, and only for this reason could I not accept the genuine benediction of the instructions of sage Narad. Through Marad lamented, I was under the influence of the illusory energy, being ignorant of the actual facts. I was sleeping on her lap under a vision of duality. I saw my brother as my enemy and falsely lamented within my heart, thinking, they are my enemies. It is very difficult to satisfy the Supreme Person Godhead, but in my case, although I have satisfied the super soul of the whole universe, I have prayed only for useless things. My activities were exactly like treatment given to a person who's already dead. Just see how unfortunate I am, for in spite of meeting the Supreme Lord, who can cut one's link with birth and death, I have prayed for the same conditions again. So, Dhruva Maharaj is, is so exalted that even after receiving all these things, he's not happy because I think he wanted to just go back home to Godhead. Uh, instead, he's going to have to enjoy. He doesn't want to enjoy all these things. Because of my state of complete foolishness and pochity of pious activities, although the Lord's offered me his personal service, I wanted material name, fame, and prosperity. My case is just like that of the poor man who, when he satisfied a great emperor who wanted to give him anything he might ask, after ignorance, asked only a few broken grains of husk rice. So and that, that is our dilemma. This is what we do. We ask for simple things. The great sage Maitri continued, My dear Vidur, persons like you who are pure devotees to the Lord's feet of Mukunda, the Supreme Person of Godhead, who can offer liberation, so Mukunda means liberation, one who gives liberation, and who are always attached to the honey of his lotus feet, are always satisfied in serving at the lotus feet of the Lord. In any condition of life, such person remains satisfied, and thus they never ask the Lord for material prosperity. <clears throat> A devotee is always engaged in drinking the honey from the lotus feet of the Lord. Unless one is freed from all material desires, he cannot actually taste the honey from the lotus feet of the Lord. One has to discharge his devotional duties without being disturbed by the coming and going of material circumstances. This desirelessness for material prosperity is called nishkam. One should not mistakenly think that nishkam is giving up all desires. That is impossible. A living entity is eternally existent and he cannot give up desires. A living entity must have desires. If you don't have desires, then you're not living. So that's the, this is the case because it's a natural to have desires. A living entity must have desires. That is the symptom of life. 
when there is a recommendation to become desireless, it is to be understood that this means that we should not desire anything for our sense gratification. That's what desireless means. So that's what nishkam means. <clears throat> not to desire anything for ourselves. Only desire things to please Krishna. For a devotee, this state of mind, nispraha, is the right position. Actually, every one of us already has an arrangement for our standard of material comforts. A devotee should always remain satisfied with the standard of comforts offered by the Lord, as stated in the Ishupanishad, Tena Tyaktena Bunjitha. This saves time for executing Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> so thank you all for joining. Ishani Mataji, Mother Shansunda Prabhu, Partha Prabhu, Praveen Mataji, Prem Prakash Prabhu, and Subhashya Mataji. Thank you for joining. So very interesting that a devotee does not any, ask anything for himself. <coughs> Lord knows what's right for us and he will give us. He will give us just the right thing or in the right amount that is not uh, dangerous for our, our bhakti. See? Going, going to the demigods is like uh, going to a, a shop or something and you, know, you just buy, do an exchange. You give them worship, they give you a boon and let's see, there's no questions asked. At least nowadays, you know, they talk about your age. You know, if you're buying something, you know, how old are you, etc. I want to see ID. But normally, the, they will give you whatever you want uh, and you pay the price. <clears throat> but with Krishna, it's different. He will only give you what's good for you, not anything uh, whimsically. So it's very interesting. Love to get your views on this. I mean, Dhruv Maharaj actually got things that he even didn't want because that, that was his destiny. He was destined to do all this. Krishna wanted him to do this. And then eventually he will go back home. Thank you. So Shani Mate just listening. That's fine. Partha Prabhu. Hare Krishna Prabhu. How are you? Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Nice class Prabhuji. Um, so many points have been covered. I, I just want to convey one point here. Like my, my brother son always used to ask us a question that uh, how come some stars like say stay forever? So I think uh, what you mentioned like Drolok is for permanent. So like the, it's a Lord's plan. It's not scientific that how come this star will not lose its um, glow and, and diminish at one point in time. Because if Krishna wants, he can keep that plan for, forever. That's it. So I thought that is the one I wanted to share Prabhuji. Because he keep on asking us this question that how come this star like Rohini, I think, Rohini Nakshatra, how come this star will will remain forever? Something like that he used to ask Prabhuji. Thank you, Rohini. Yeah, it's very interesting, actually, because when there's complete disillusion, all the universes are destroyed. And when Brahma is, uh, you know, restarts uh, this material creation, uh, the universes come out like bubbles from Mahavishnu, right? And they, they expand into big universes, <clears throat> and then half of the universe is filled with the uh, with water. Now this is very interesting because I I wouldn't know the answer to this, uh, you know, because I haven't really thought about it. Is uh, so how where does that uh, the star remain? If the star is within the universe, is the universe is go back into into uh, Mahavishnu, and the they they sort of contract and go back into Mahavishnu, and then when the creation starts again, they come out again. So it might be an interesting question to ask someone who might know. So how, where does the pole star stay? Because the the planet, uh, the whole universe is is, is, is uh, taken in, uh, sucked in into, into Mahavishnu. So, yeah. So, <laughs> I think it just creates more questions here, Prabhu. Thank you for asking. So, Thank you. That's, yeah, that's, yeah so it's a good question. You know, so how, now we know that Dhruv, uh, the pole star stays, Dhruv Lok stays, but where does he stay? Now that, that would be an interesting question because the, 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 all the universes are uh, in a dissolution. They, they go back into Mahavishnu. So maybe we can find out sometime. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Prabhuji Madhuji, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Dhanvat Pranam to everyone. Yes. Dhruv Maharaj, he was very wise. He, you know, despite getting everything, he 
he he still didn't want to enjoy the material lenses so it's a big lesson for us but then at the same time probably i always think it's okay for us the position we are in now to think yes okay we don't want any material things we don't want to ask but then if we think like if somebody hasn't got a house and they still got a young family then is it really still possible to because the way the society is now so we still need material things as well so i don't know how easy it would be but then there are great devotees who have done that we have heard so many stories but this thing of this comes to mind yes some people they have to work 10 hours 12 hours 14 hours to make and meet uh, yeah that's the only thing that comes to my mind that is it still acceptable that we have to work hard do 14 hours and then we just think of god as we are working and not being able to do our 16 rounds and all the other things that that are recommended so yeah yeah okay Thank you, Adhani. Actually, just say that the Lord gives you enough. He didn't say that you won't, you know, you won't have a house or this and that. He got, Lord gives you enough, so you can, you know, you can do your bhakti nicely. So if somebody's working uh, long hours, you know, some they sometimes say to me, Prabhu, I'm working so many hours, I'm doing night shifts, etc. When do I do my bhakti? So we just pray, isn't it? We pray. Krishna sees our endeavor and he makes arrangements for us. Uh, sometimes we have to maybe burn off some of the karma, you know, so we've got to make a start. Uh, we've got to try our best in our, within our circumstances. And then Krishna makes it a little bit easier for you or he creates new circumstances where you can do bhakti. Uh, but we have, you know, we, we sincerely keep going. It might take, you know, some, some people might take a bit longer. But eventually, you, you will you will get it. Uh, you know, you you get your uh, desire. Krishna people's all desires, good and bad, even you know. So you, you will get it, but we have to persevere. So thank you, Anthony. I always had firm faith in God. You know, I always believed that we, whatever we get, it's by the mercy of God. You know, He's even if it, we don't ask, you know, all our you know, uh, things are met because uh, my dad, he had, was a firm believer. So we, you know, picked up on that, that yes, we believe in God and we don't have to ask for things. Uh, yeah, you don't you don't have to ask. Krishna sees everything. He's in the heart. So he sees everything. There is, we just ask for bhakti and for that bhakti, he will make arrangements that we can do bhakti. He will, he will give you know, I mean, we, we talk about material opulence, uh, so we can find time to do bhakti that, uh, you know, it creates this, the, uh, it makes a little bit easy, life easier for us. So, you know, we're not working 60 hours a week or 70 hours a week or something. Then, you know, like you're going to be tired. How are you going to do your chanting? How are you going to do your deity worship? How are you going to cook? So it, it, makes, it makes life easier, right? And not only that, you know, because we have previous karmas to burn off, uh, we, we may get uh, health issues, but you find that your health issues are just just enough that it, it does not come in the way of your bhakti. You can still do your chanting and everything. You you will you will if you are sincerely want to do it, you will find a way to do it. Your problems will be just on the border that you know you're not completely hopeless. And I have heard people say that. I've spoken to people in the one. And they have said that you know old people uh, at old at the old age uh, where you you know you sort of expected that body doesn't function as good as in the younger age and they they even they say that Krishna just keeps us just enough that we can continue our bhakti now what more what more can we ask you know this there's laws of 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 this uh, planet right there, there's things that uh, that, that you, you can't avoid birth, death, old age, and disease, these will come. But Krishna just modifies them a little bit so we can do our bhakti at the same time. He, he, want, he wants us to do our bhakti. He wants us to come back. So he, he does not interfere with our, with our bhakti. He'll make sure that you know we can do. But we have to keep trying. Sometimes it may seem that we're not getting the opportunity, 
but eventually the opportunity will come. You have to persevere. It's like uh, oh, Damodar Mantra just gone. I mean, Yashoda Maya, she wasn't able to bind Krishna straight away, but she didn't give up. She kept trying, she kept trying, she kept trying. And in the end, Krishna gave up. He says, you know, that's very nice. Uh, her endeavor is amazing. And now I'll give her the mercy. So things don't necessarily happen straight away. You have to keep trying and trying and trying and trying. And eventually they will happen when Krishna sees your endeavor, that you are determined, he wants to see your determination. And then things will happen. Thank you, Mandir. Hari Bol Mataji. Sorry, Hari Bol Prabhuji. Sorry, I don't know where my brain is. I was just thinking of my daughters, older daughters, because they used to like do Ekadshi and everything when they were not married. But after marriage, they've just changed and now they've just gone away from God. So that bothers me. But then I understand karma, like you said, Prabhuji. So it's probably their karma, so they still need to suffer. So. I don't know. All I do is just pray to Krishna, give them, you know, bless mercy so they come to you as well. Yeah, we will have free will, right? We have free will. Krishna doesn't interfere with our free will. He fulfills our desires. If you if you want, if you don't desire to be with him, he will fulfill that desire. If you want to, if you desire to be with him, he will fulfill that desire. But uh, if, as a parent, you you set a good example for them. Um, and then they, they, they will see your endeavor and they will see the change and you know how much you have achieved. And they, they, they will see your spirituality and they'll be inspired by that. You inspire them. Sometimes you can't make children do things. You have to inspire them with your own actions. And when they see you, when you, when they see your uh, results, that they will be inspired to follow. Hey, Paul Prabhuji, thank you. Even the best children who have been in Krishna consciousness at some stage, they leave and then they come back later on as well. You just mm. have to be patient with them. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Prem Prakash Prabhuji, Hare Krishna. Prabhu, are you able to unmute? Uh, my voice will be a bit low, Prabhuji. Okay. Mr. I mean, uh, uh, pronounced you also. I was just, with this past time, it seems like Lord is still very merciful. I mean, regarding if you have any desire that's going to be ful fulfilled. I mean, because the reason why a G, I mean, we come to this material world is to fulfill our desire, I mean, and to suffer whatever, or basically receive whatever is outcome of that desire. Obviously, these desires are, if they were all spiritual, then one would not come to this material world. So it's pretty understood that everyone has desire. So Lord actually allows us, or probably gives opportunity to fulfill that desire. But if he's merciful, he also makes arrangement that while those desires are fulfilled, his attachment, devotee's attachment to the Lord, the Lord also increases to a certain extent, to a lot of extent, and that's the reason. Uh, that's the reason uh, the shortcut when it's recommended shortcut. It's it said that not to have any desire, which is against the will of Krishna. Um, but if 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 Krishna is really merciful, then then he can do one thing is that he can just finish all the desires. The way of doing it that he can either deprive, if he's really merciful, then he will deprive the devotee so that he can just give up all the desires. Or then, and the other way of doing it is that he will grant all the desires so that he can fulfill the desire and then again return back back to God. Um, with Dhruv Maharaj as well, um, he was granted all the desire, but then he was also told that what's going to happen in his life, how he's going to return and everything. It's our forgetfulness sometimes that we forget, but Krishna never forgets, so he will make her, he makes arrangement. It's so all we need to understand that the arrangement. Once one is surrendered to Krishna, chanted the holy name, I mean, we need to 
trusting Krishna that whatsoever happens in a or any any devotee's life is will be an arrangement uh, somehow to return back to Krishna. So it will it is a U turn immediately. Whether it takes detour or not, that's a separate thing. But Prahlad Maharaj eventually it happens as well that he he's being he, he rules the kingdom for a very long time and then he sees that his brother dies, his mother in law oh, sorry, his stepmother actually passes away and then he actually takes revenge, which is not as a part of uh, regular acts of devo of devotee, but still when he goes through, he was reminded that what what is his position. So from that perspective, Prahlad Maharaj actually exemplifies and gives example is that although um, although one approaches with whatever mood with to Lord Krishna, Lord Krishna will grant the desires so that he can just get over with whatever he wanted to achieve. But also while doing so, necessary arrangements are made in different terms for him to return to um, Krishna. So we, we, for us to take from here is that we need to be sincere and leave rest of the things to Krishna. Not everything is beyond, is within our control, but it is in control of Krishna. So if he desires, he can make changes in our life. Um, and he definitely does basically, we need to trust him. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you, Ramani. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, our desires are due to contamination in the heart. So when we are chanting, we are, we're, trying, we're trying to clean that contamination. We're cleaning the heart through our japa, through our chanting, and then our desires become less, right? They are they're intrinsic, intrinsic to, to ourselves, our desires, due to the contamination, the seeds of desire in the heart. And the chanting burns those seeds of desire. Not only seeds, or not only the chanting. That's uh, not not only what what is there uh, that desires we are we are holding in our in our consciousness, but the, the unconscious, subconscious desires as well that lying in the heart. The the chanting burns them all. This is why we start becoming. That's the first symptom of our pro, that we're progressing. Our desires get less. Our detachment, we become detachment from material things. That's the first thing that happens when you start chanting. Now, Guru Maharaj, uh, Jeff Taka Maharaj, uh, he had put a message, uh, like he had said something, and he says that if you have desires, then you cannot give up this material body. You keep coming back again and again. If you, if you look at just ordinarily, you think, ah, that seems so unfair. If you have desires, you cannot give up this body. But when you think about it, what Guru Mahdi is saying is that you're going to need this body. If you have desires, you're going to need this body. It's, it's not that somebody is forcing this body on you. It's that you're going to need, if you want to fulfill the desires, the only way you fulfill them is through this material body. So if you have desires, then you've got to hold on. It's something that is necessary. It's a tool. It's an instrument that you're going to, if you want to play Mardanga, you're going to need the Mardanga. If you want the material things, then you're going to need the material body. So it's all down to us. We're the ones who are holding on to the material body because we have material desires. So we need to give up those material desires. So then, then you won't need the body anymore. And the body, we lose it, we'll get spiritual body. So I thought it was very interesting. Thank you, Ravi. Swashi Mother Ji, Hare Krishna. Mother, yeah, yeah, okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Well, first, uh, first, um, Guru Maharaj, he wanted uh, material, uh, he had material desires, but when he had association with the Supreme Lord, he just wanted to do devotional service and uh, have love of uh, Krishna. Everybody, everyone does sadhana or devotional service to get the love of Krishna. Love, the object of the love of devotional service is love of Krishna. When we love 
uh, somebody we want to save them so when we if we love krishna we have to save krishna but uh, if we want to enjoy ourselves then we save maya and um, this love is uh, said um, that this love is uh, called gupta vittam the hidden treasure of golok vrindavan because um, it is not for this material world but until now but now by mercy of chetan mahaprabhu he brought this love of krishna by chanting the maha mantra hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare hare ram hare ram 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 hare because the real, real love we can see is in vrindavan golok vrindavan by gopis and uh, gopas and uh, mother jashoda and uh, nand baba so it's, it's actually they, they've got real love, but we got in this, in this material world is just the opposite uh, of um, the spiritual world. Uh, so we get mostly lust. We want anything in our favor. So we like to enjoy our, for our body, not, not for some, we are very uh, selfish. Uh, we, we, everything we want to do is for ourselves. So, but everything we should do is do for Krishna, Vishra Krishna says that uh, his Bhukta Ram at Tap Tap Lok Maheshwaram. He is the enjoyer of the sacrifices and the austerities. He is the control of the planet and the demigod and the, he is well wisher of uh, all living entities. So we should save Krishna because uh, he is the real enjoyer, but uh, we like to enjoy ourselves. So our, our object of devotional service is for the love of Krishna, to love Krishna. That's why we're doing it and we're enjoying it. He's uh, enjoyer. We shouldn't enjoy it. So we, we should save Krishna because he's the main enjoyer. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. And uh, welcome to my father and Lodi joined. Uh, thank you so much. You want to add anything? Okay, great. So we'll do a couple of rounds uh, now. Swarishi Mataji, uh, can you please start the first round and then uh, Prameen Mataji, please do the second round. Please. Namah Vishnu Padaya Krishna Padaya Bhutale Shri Mati 